Hello, everyone. What a pleasure. Conferences are back, yeah? Uh, guten Morgen or guten Tag, I don't know. So uh, we're going to speak about machine learning, but in a special way uh, from, uh, with a different approach uh, from, the, from um, the way of uh, a developer who is not an expert in machine learning. OK, uh, there's a lot to cover, so sometimes I'll, I'll go a bit fast, but I'll stay at the end if you have plenty of questions, which I hope I'll be there with you to answer all, all of your questions. OK, um, quick introduction. So my name is Laurent Picard. Maybe you, you guessed I'm, I'm French. Uh, I live in Paris. Um, my background, so I, I worked 17 years in the ebook industry before uh, ebook readers were a thing, uh, and then uh, developed the market. Um, I worked on eight generations of ebook readers. A few of them uh, were launched, uh, almost all of them were launched in Germany with Velbiel, Talia, and so on. Um, this led me to cloud technologies, and for the five uh, past years, I've been working with Google Cloud in, pa in the Paris office, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, cloud technologies are magical. Um, I'd like to know maybe a little bit more about you. Um, who is already working with machine learning services at work? It's hard. I, I barely see you. A few of you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. And who was also using cloud services at work? A lot more. Hey, there's more and more every time, so yeah, that's nice. I, I would say above 50% now, maybe 60%. Cool. Um, so I love to start with this quote uh, from Clark, um, because it still represents what I feel when I see something new develop with machine learning. It feels like magic. It, how does it work and so on? But it's just technology, OK? And so my goal here is to scratch a little bit the surface with you so that you feel confident and you can uh, develop with machine learning. So what's machine learning? Uh, that's my personal definition. That's how I've been using, benefiting from machine learning for the past years. Um, you have data, right? And, and you can understand what's in your data. You can extract information out of your data. Uh, of course, that's not the real definition. If there are experts here, yeah, you're, you're crazy. Uh, machine learning is a subset of uh, AI. And within machine learning, you have deep learning dealing with neural networks. And that's where we've been getting most of the improvements uh, from the past years. OK. Um, how does it work? So I, I'll be using mainly machine learning because it's a generic term, but most of the time, actually, I will be meaning deep learning. Okay. So how, how does it work? Decades ago, um, researchers thought, okay, let's try to mimic the way we think our brain works with synapses and, and neurons. Um, for that, we need examples. Exactly like we learn in real life as kids and as adults, we learn a lot from examples. We see our parents, our teachers, and we try to replicate it, and we um, extract patterns from that. We extract information, and we, and we are able to, to do something similar or exactly the same thing. And what's magical is that we manage to solve problems thanks to that, problems that we couldn't solve before. I will give you as many examples as, uh, as possible. So as of today, there are in, in, a, in a company, there are three ways uh, you can benefit from machine learning. You can focus on machine learning. You can spend most of your time dealing with machine learning. If I was in my 20s, that's what I would do, because you can spend uh, day and night. It's still the early stages of machine learning. But if you prefer to focus on if you're a developer or you're launching, you're building stuff, and so on, uh, so you're if you're focusing on uh, development, you can still benefit from machine learning. And there are two ways. The first one is you can use um, machine learning models. They are ready to use. They have been trained sometimes on millions of examples. They are state of the art. And uh, you can use them right away. Um, OK? And the other way, filling a big gap in the middle, as you see, uh, are AutoML techniques. And with AutoML, you can even build your own custom machine learning models. And my goal in this presentation, in two parts, is to show you what you can do, to show you. And they are really like building blocks. It's like a Lego brick. You take the Lego brick, you put it in your, into your architecture, and suddenly you can do something smarter. OK? So let's start with the machine learning APIs. If you remember my, defi my personal definition, you have information 
and this information can be text, pictures, videos, and even speech. Uh, I will be using the Google Cloud uh, technologies, but most of the principles are generic, so if you're working with the cloud providers, you will uh, you will find something similar most of the time, okay? And so from um, this uh, data, from this input, images, pictures, text, and speech, you can extract information. And sometimes the information that you'd like to extract is actually your input in some other form that is more legible, more understandable to you, or more practical to use, okay? So let's start with the vision API, the, the vision model. What can a vision model do? Uh, I start with that for personal reasons, and you'll understand why. I, I love it. That's my favorite uh, problem and solution. Um, so before machine learning, uh, that's a problem uh, I was trying to solve with teachers. So that was 30 years ago in the 90s. And at the time, to understand what we had in a picture, we would use, uh, we would detect edges. So here, for instance, uh, we would be maybe able to detect a pattern for flowers and then uh, detect uh, flowers here and elsewhere. But it kind of worked, but, but not, not really, not in production. As soon as we would use new pictures, different pictures, it just failed miserably. And machine learning is solving that because machine learning is able to detect patterns, infer, and, and give you results from something it has never seen before. And that, that's really the, the magic. So a vision model can, <clears throat> first of all, um, describe you a picture with labels. So here, uh, it's, a label, uh, it's a picture from New Zealand, and it tells me, OK, this picture is about nature, flower, garden, and so on. One uh, common uh, thing is that you get confidence scores. So it's how much confident the model is about the result. So here it's very confident that it's about nature and so on, and that's good. I told you it's an API, so you can do, you can do a, um, um, a REST request or an RPC request to it, and here it's, a, it's the JSON response that you can get. So you see the label um, and the confidence score. But a vision model can be a lot more precise than, the, than that. It can detect objects. So here, uh, on this picture, it does detect people, persons, so you see. But even uh, within the big bandit box, it's able to detect t-shirts and pants, even the small person in the background, and uh, the ceiling lamp here. And still more precise than that, it can detect faces and give you the facial features, so the position of the nose, the eyes, and everything, and can even try to detect um, sentiments, emotions. So here, on this example, uh, I get that. So this is Gollum, right? A 3D rendition of Gollum. Not, not a real human face. Gollum used to be human, then they degenerated a little bit. And so it's telling me that this face is likely angry, and Gollum is always angry, so maybe that was easy. Okay. So it works. Uh, you get uh, even more um, features, more information about the picture, and so on. Another field that's been fully solved thanks to machine learning is OCR, text detection, optical character recognition. Um, there are specialized companies uh, for decades who worked on that problem. It worked okay, but with machine learning, it's almost perfect now. And so here it's a screenshot, so it's just pixel, right? It's, a, it's an image. And I do get the perfect transcription of the text. Um, and I even get more information. I get the different levels. So in green, the different blocks, three blocks. Uh, then the different lines, the different words, and even the different symbols. It's kind of boring because it really it is almost perfect today. So we can really say OCR is a solved problem. You can be very confident in using an OCR. But keep in mind that machine learning models are never perfect. It's impossible. Uh, we are humans. We make mistakes all the time. We, we're not perfect. It's impossible. So you have to be cautious about the results and know that there are limits. So it's also interesting to test the limits of the, the machine learning models. And here, um, so I apply the perspective effect on the same screenshot, and I do get the same result. Um, so, so very happy about it. But I can tell you that um, two years ago, I was getting a small difference. Um, the double quotes at the end um, would be recognized as a single quote on the exact same picture. So, a nice feature, a nice uh, advantage of machine learning models is that if you train them with more examples, then they improve over time. 
And so I could really see the improvement on, on this example. So OCR is a solved problem, but there's a, a more difficult problem, handwriting detection. And it does already work on handwriting. So here is a sheet of paper with uh, Tolkien's handwriting. We can read it, right? Not as fast as uh, typewritten printed text, but we can read it, and so can uh, the OCR. And I get the same level of information, um, the different blocks here, different lines and words and symbols and so on. Um, it's very good. So um, what I can tell you also is that a few months back, so this year, a few more, I think it was in April, so I, I, I did the, the, the same test before, but I was uh, getting an annoying mistake. It would detect here even kings. But I know it's about elves uh, in Tolkien and so on, and here it's pretty well written, elven king. So it was making a mistake and doesn't make it anymore. So once again, um, the OCR, uh, the handwriting uh, model uh, improved, and now uh, uh, it's making more mistakes with handwriting, of course, because they are there are uh, um, handwritings for, from each of you. Uh, we all, all have a unique handwriting, but, but it's already working uh, superbly, uh, a bit less perfect than OCR. And another feature from a vision model is, is that you can, of course, detect objects, but you can detect entities. Uh, so entities are famous persons or famous uh, entities, objects, that you can find on Wikipedia, for instance, or, or on public pages on the web. And so to try that, I took a picture that I had never seen before. So it's from a Spanish newspaper. Um, so I, I found this picture interesting. And I modified the picture. So I zoomed in. I cropped the picture. So it's larger than that. And I applied a color filter. So I'm sure it's not the same resolution, not the same pixel. So there's not any pixel in common with the original picture. Only a human can tell uh, where it's coming from. Oh can match, uh, but actually the vision model can match uh, similar pictures too. And so I was surprised here because um, when I ask the vision model, it tells me that there's a partial matching image here, and it's actually the image that I used uh, in the Spanish newspaper. And uh, you can tell because here it's telling me that the context of the result is Spanish. Um, and so it gives me a label to describe me as best uh, as it can. Uh, the picture, it's GRR Tolkien, which is correct. Um, and as a developer, something that's amazing, uh, and here it's pretty unique, is you get an identifier for the entity here. And so here, M041H0 is actually GRR Tolkien. It's an uh, identifier co coming from a, a knowledge graph, a huge database. Um, and uh, at the end of the results, I get lists of images, and they, um, they are actually um, images of a man or a woman against a tree or people in a forest. And so it's used for companies to detect similar images, some sometimes detect copyright infringement. Um, if you, there's plenty of uh, applications that you, you can imagine, okay? So I told you it's uh, an API, so you can do direct request, but there are also uh, client libraries, um, in our case, but I think uh, from all other providers, so that you can use your prefer preferred uh, programming language. And in a few lines of code, you can actually do the request. But what's really nice is that you can use the results right away. So uh, let me give you the, the principle. So of course, you need the package, the module, well, whatever, depending on your language. So here, uh, my, my favorite language is Python currently. You provide the content all, always. So you create a client. The client is the wrapper around the API. It will, it will make the calls. It will manage the authentication and so on. You provide the content, an image here, and you call the feature. Uh, face detection, for instance, and here you have the results right away, and you can um, work on the picture, um, extract the info that you'd like, and so on. Uh, so just these few lines, and it works almost in, in, in real time. We will do a, a demo a bit later altogether, all okay? So that's the, the demo I just mentioned. Uh, keep your smartphones connected, because you will uh, access uh, my demo online. So you've seen what you can do f from pictures. You can extrapolate that to videos. Uh, it's very similar. The difference is that a video has one more dimension, time. OK? Um, so you can do, uh, maybe uh, it's best, best that I show you. So here it's a video that's been analyzed by the video intelligence model. 
and you kind of find the same uh, results as for a picture, but there's one more dimension. So here you find all the video shots, so the different uh, sequences inside the video, they're pretty short, uh, two seconds, three seconds, three second, <coughs> sorry, five second, seconds, and so you can index them and go straight to, to the different sequence. But as you can see, um, you also get the labels for the video, but at the segment level. And so, for instance, here, I know that there's a bridge at the beginning of the video and here, and I can directly, I can index the video and go directly there. Yeah, so you see the bridge, but you have one more dimension. Sorry. <coughs> and so it means you can um, detect objects, but you can also track them. So let me show you the bridge is here, but we can get its location and we can track it within the sequence. And there are even buildings. It also works for persons. Uh, so you even get the, the, the skeleton of the different persons, uh, faces, of course, uh, likewise. You can also detect logos and extract speech, um, um, uh, extract the text, or let me show you the text maybe. So you see all the text that's been found. Um, let's have a look here. Okay. And of course, the text is like, is an object like uh, another one, and you can track the, the text within uh, the video also. Okay. Um, here's an example. So I, I've written an article how to automatically detect objects and generate uh, GIF animations like here. <clears throat> so you'll find that. I will give you one link at the end, only one link that rules them all, okay? So you can stay with me and you will have all the different links if you're interested by articles, tutorials, whatever. Um, I will give you a, a long list uh, from one link. Okay, so here the same principle. You create a client um, linking to the, the, the video model. You specify what you'd like to have, object tracking, for instance, and then you just call annotate video. So it's not real time. It has to process, extract the frames and so on. But it's pretty, pretty fast anyway. And then you get a lot of information from that. OK? So we've seen everything, visual pictures, videos. But the first field uh, researchers worked on was actually text, because we deal with text all the time on computers, um, on paper, and so on. And so the big field is called NLP, Natural Language Processing. Understand, uh, the goal is to understand uh, languages. And once again, uh, machine learning uh, made a big difference. So first of all, it's able to give you a uh, to <coughs> analyze the syntax of the text that you give. And so on this uh, sentence, first of all, it tells me that it's English. This is easy to, to detect with uh, statistical analysis. But here, I had never had uh, this level of preciseness and information. You get, of course, all the genders, types um, of words, but all the relationships between them. And something that is often missing, the punctuation also is detected properly and so on. As a developer, you also uh, can use the lemmas. So it's pretty cool because the lemmas are the canonical forms. Uh, you can get rid of the tenses, uh, of the genders and so on. Uh, maybe, yeah, you'll see, uh, uh, I, I don't remember in German uh, what would be a canonical form for, for some words. Uh, of course, for the tenses, it's easy. <clears throat> Something more interesting is that, uh, like in pictures, you can detect entities. So on the same sentence, I get three different types of entities. In the red, uh, persons. Tolkien is a person, a writer is a person, and so on. And so here is the JSON island I get for Tolkien. But I, I was amaz amazed. I don't know if you noticed, but here I get an identifier. And it's exactly the same when I had Tolkien in a picture. So it means I can identify entities with a unique ID in pictures, videos, and text. It can be useful in some uh, use cases. British is uh, mapped to the UK, so it's detected as a location. And the three books at the end, The Hobbit and so on, The Silmarillion, are detected, each of them, as a work of art. That is perfect. You can also ask for content classification. And so on this sentence, it uh, tells me that it should be classified under books and literature at 97% of confidence. That is perfect. This is used by companies who have oh, lots of archives, sometimes new, newspapers. They have sometimes more than 
uh, a century of archives, so they have digitized their newspapers, um, they have done an OCR pass, but they can also automatically classify the different uh, pages or different uh, corpus uh, uh, text pieces and so on. Okay? And finally, like in pictures, you can do sentiment analysis uh, in text. And so to try that out, um, I took, sorry, I took a um, positive review of The Hobbit from the New York Times and a negative review uh, in the social network um, um, from Pauline. Um, and so you get results. Um, you get, conf you get uh, scores between minus one and plus one at different levels again. So I'm showing you uh, sentences here. And it does work. I do get negative uh, scores for some sentences coming from Pauline's review. She really hated the book. Um, and I do get uh, close to one uh, scores um, for the positive review uh, uh, in the New York Times. Oh, I'm not showing here. There are many sentences that are around zero, the, around the zero score that are neutral because most of the time we are more nuanced. And uh, it's used by companies to analyze reviews, uh, to analyze social networks, and they can extract a lot of more precise information. Uh, when you do a review on a website, you can get, give a score between one and five, but that's an average. If you give a three out of five, what does it mean? And so thanks to that, you can dive, diaper, uh, uh, dive deeper, sorry, um, and you can understand that maybe the service was good, but uh, the food had some issues and so on. And, so, and also companies are tr can track uh, when they are famous, they have uh, entity IDs and they, they can track how well we speak about them. Okay? Here is an example of how to do that. Uh, once again, it, it works uh, almost in real time. Um, another ma machine learning model dealing with text, um, I think you have hold, all used it at least once. Uh, is there anyone who has never used Google Translate here? Never m met anyone? Uh, please say so. Anyone? No, okay. Uh, so this is Google Translate. Uh, so you know how it works, uh, you've used it, you are aware of, of the results and, and the quality, maybe with German and other languages. Um, but let me share uh, something that I find uh, interesting. So um, six years ago, uh, I was not working uh, with Google, uh, I had my own company, and I was using uh, Google Translate very often to translate Chinese and Japanese text into French. It was working okay. Um, but one day, suddenly, it got a lot better. Um, results w were of very high quality, and, and I'm pretty sure you, you, you could see the same, so all the better. But when I joined Google, I actually learned what happened. And uh, on this day, so six years ago, um, the, the, the Google Translate team switched from a statistical model dealing with sentences and so phrase-based uh, to a machine learning model. And that's the green improvements that you can see here. And that's the improvement that I could feel and could see uh, in the results. And since then, it just kept improving. When you're using Google Translate, if you say, oh, this translation is not good, you are actually helping the model get better because it will try to converge to a different re result, and very often it's a better result, OK? Um, so here you can see the different improvements since then. Um, maybe of interest is it's also working on languages for which we don't have uh, lots of examples. So it's a pretty hard challenge. So here you have German, English, French, and so on. Uh, but here you can have Maori. Um, and for Maori, we don't have a lot of text. It's uh, more a verbal language, OK? But we managed to get nice results uh, now, a bit like uh, six years ago uh, for our own languages. So here it's embarrassing to use it. You just need two lines. You create a client, and you call translate on your text, and that's it, OK? So we've seen pictures, videos, and text. And now speech. There are two um, speech to text and text to speech uh, ML models. Um, and once again, uh, they made a big difference. I'm pretty sure you remember a few years back, you, could, you would call your bank and you would say, I want an advisor. Advisor. And, and you would try many different ways. It didn't work. Now it works, and you will have assistance on your smartphones at home, maybe. Uh, Alexa, Siri, uh, the Google Assistant, it does work, and that's the first 
a building block of an assistant. You can speak to anything, and it, it can transcribe your speech into text. And thanks to the natural language model we, we've seen before, we can actually un understand wh wh what you, you just said. Uh, the challenge is, it does work in real time, so uh, it was not the case a few, a few years uh, ago. Uh, you had to wait for the, the answer. And a nice outcome of machine learning is Machine learning is trained on real examples, and in real examples, there is noise. And so the nice outcome is that it's robust to noise. You can speak to an assistant with surrounding noise, and it will work, and I will show you. Show you. Okay. Once again, if you're able to understand what you have in your data, you can index it, and here um, it's even more precise. It's able to give you the, ti the timestamp for each word. So it means if you're looking for some words, you can know exactly where they have been pronounced. Uh, and so you, you can index maybe in your company, you have uh, dozens of hours uh, of speech data. So here, this is a tutorial that I wrote, and I tried, so it's, I uh, recorded myself uh, reciting a French poetry, Maître Corbeau sur un arbre perché tenait dans son bec un fromage. So it's a classical French poetry. So but I, I wanted to try it, uh, so I said, okay, uh, I want punctuation and I want the timestamps, and it does work, uh, you can try it. Uh, um, yeah, it's a tutorial uh, in a few steps. Um, and poetry is a bit hard, so that's kind of the limit. But it does work, and from more standard speech, it works really well. Maybe you've seen now on YouTube or other um, um, uh, video tools, you can have the live transcript in subtitles. And it makes a lot of difference for accessibility for users who cannot hear or uh, who have uh, some disabilities. Okay. So just a few lines. That, that's uh, and now the other uh, machine, uh, the other way around text to speech. You have text, and you can now pronounce uh, very human-like um, um, speech. I did use that 20 years ago on one of the ebook readers that I showed at the, showed at the beginning. It was an horror. Uh, I was proud. I made. I implemented the solution, but nobody used it because you would play with it for 30 seconds. But it was like. Alice in Wonderland, and so on. So it was a robot talking to you. Now it's not the case anymore. You feel like a human is talking to you. Um, at Google, so it's been developed by DeepMind. You know them. Uh, they have beaten the world champion at the Go game. Uh, they have beaten ga gamers at StarCraft, and they are doing uh, amazing stuff. And so they developed WaveNet, and they, 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 they completed two challenges. So first, um, it's it's made, I think it's the best, I have to admit, it's the best machine learning model. The, the result is really like a human voice. And it works with whatever the sentences that you, you give it to. And it works better than real time, because in one second, you can generate 20 seconds of speech. So it's uh, 20x. So let me, let, let's do a live demo. Um, I think you, you've seen that maybe, but... Maybe not. Um, so I'm going uh, to do a, a search using my voice. Um, so here it's French, so let's switch to English. But you can try the same uh, of Deutsch if you'd like. And so I'm, I'm going to do a search with my voice, OK? But I will pretend that I'm a French tourist in London. Yeah. What is the temperature in Hamburg? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Right now. Okay, and the result is is pronounced with the WaveNet voice. Um, I hope you could see. So in real time, we got partial results. So at some point, I think it, it, it thought I was going to pronounce in Hong Kong. Um, but what I did is I used a very thick French accent. And so if I had done this in London, maybe they would, they would uh, sorry, can you repeat? And then the second or third time, they would have understood me. So I didn't use the right phonemes. Uh, and companies before, uh, they used phonemes to deal with speech, and it didn't work. Uh, and, and so here, machine learning is really uh, solving that. And it's pretty magical. We, we don't think about it because it just works. Okay? And so what it means is that you can really build chatbots that you can speak to, and then you can uh, get uh, answers back. It's, uh, so here, it's an other tut tutorial that I wrote. So just to show you that in a few lines, you can generate WAV files. Uh, with different sentences and different accents. So in English, uh, you have the Australian accent, the British, 
uh, the Indian English accent and, of course, the American accent in French, the uh, French from France, but also from Canada. Um, I don't know if there's a difference. There's a difference between the the German, uh, German, uh, the, the Austrian, uh, maybe German and Swiss German, but uh, I don't think we have uh, uh, dif these differences uh, yet. Uh, I don't know if it's important either. <laughs> you, you'll tell me. So we've seen most of what you can do with existing machine learning models, but in some cases, in your comp especially in your companies where you're dealing with unique use cases, you're you're trying to solve unique problems. What you've seen before will not be enough. Maybe it won't work because you will want to do something more precise. And AutoML techniques can help you, maybe. Um, and let me show you how with the, this example. So if I take these two pictures and give them to the vision model we've seen before, I get al almost the same results. Because basically, um, those are clouds in the sky. OK? So it's all, almost the same. But if I'd like to be more precise and build a weather forecasting uh, app uh, just by taking picture of clouds, and it would tell me from the shape, OK, in three hours, maybe you're going to get rain. I need to be able to, uh, to detect uh, the shape of the clouds and detect the type, uh, the types of the different clouds. And here I, I'm stuck. And that's where AutoML can help. Um, so how does it work? This time, you need to work a little bit more uh, than before. It was uh, just straight, straightforward before. But here, you need to build a data set. You need to provide the examples that you're dealing with. And so you need to, to give the training da data. It can be pictures, videos, and so on. And then everything else is automated. So you launch a training. By default, it's, uh, for all the solutions, it can be a cloud training. And with the cloud training, you will get a state-of-the-art model customized to your needs. Okay? For some problems, you can also decide that you want an edge um, training. So, and then you will have an edge model. An edge model is, is smaller, is lighter, and you can actually export it. And you can run it in a mobile application. Uh, you can run it in a container or also in a, in a, in a browser. So uh, I will show you an, uh, an example. You can export it uh, in the TensorFlow.js format and run it in a web page. OK? Um, so for uh, our example, uh, we need pictures of clouds. And we need to, to tell uh, or to label them uh, to create the data set. And so say, OK, here, this picture is a cumulus. Uh, and this one is a Cyrus, and so on. Okay. What's cool with AutoML techniques is that you don't need um, thousands or some <laughs> with uh, or the big models, millions of examples. You just need ideally 1,000, but it starts to work with 100 or 200 pictures in this pro in this case. So here, are maybe roughly 300 on average. Uh, and it works really greatly. Um, uh, so depending on the problem, you will need more or, or less pictures. So I labeled the pictures here. I launched a first training. Um, so my experience is that it's an iterative process. We are humans. When we are dealing with manual stuff, we make mistakes. And so I launched a quick training here to get a sense of how well the model is doing. And I could. After this training, so it last, uh, um, so it's distributed. So uh, after 20 minutes, I got it, and I could see that I had mistakes, wrong labels in my dataset. So I fixed that and launched a, a new training. I was more confident, and longer training. And now I have a model that is 90% uh, precise, uh, and it's already a very good model at this stage. Uh, you can, of course, go higher uh, if if it's needed. One of the tools for here, it's an image classification, it's a classification problem, um, is the confusion matrix. And so here it gives me an idea of how well my model is doing. I know it's doing great with four types of cloud, but it's doing badly with the alto cumulus. And so doing a data set, when I said you, you need a bit to, do, to, to work a little bit more, is common sense. It's like an art also. You need to be careful. And so what happens here, for sure, I need to go back to my data set. I have an issue with the alto, alto cumulus examples. And so first, I have less examples. Um, but it can be OK. Um, but m most of my examples are the same, because 
many of them were actually extract extracted from a, a video. And in a data set, it doesn't make sense, because if I have 50 pictures extracted from a video, they bring the same information. And so I could just use one or a couple of them, and that would be enough. And, and my model would actually be more balanced. And so I need to bring um, diverse examples and uh, real life examples. So here you can really see the, the issue in my model. But beside that, it works pretty well. And so once I have my cloud model, I can um, s deploy it. So it's served like an API, exactly like what you've seen before in the API examples. And then you can send it um, um, new pictures and, and get live results. And so here is a picture coming from my smartphone. Of course, it's not been used in the data set. I'm not cheating. And it tells me it's a cumulus at 97%. And that's perfect, or very good, at least. OK? So I, again, I showed you uh, an example with images, but it works on videos, on text, and even structured data if you have databases, uh, tables, CSV files, and so on. Uh, so here are the problems. Um, three years ago, uh, there were just a couple of them, and then now we, are, we managed to solve more and more problems with auto-email techniques. You can do custom. Let me show you a different one. Maybe it, it's uh, clearer here. So the problem that we just solved is image classification. Okay? We are able to tell this picture is this, 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 or not any uh, of, of this. You can be more precise. You can detect objects also, uh, custom objects. And you can go down to the level of, to the pixel level. You can know, okay, this pixel ba belongs to uh, the background. This pixel belongs to the, pyra the blue py the pyramid, and this pixel belongs to the cube. There's a, uh, yeah, there are fun examples. Um, you can uh, do likewise uh, on videos and on text. You can build your own custom uh, models, and for that you just need examples, the examples that you will deal with in real life or in production, okay? Uh, so something that is not deep learning but machine learning is uh, so dealing with tables, structured data. You can do automated regression classifications and even forecasting if you have just data. Uh, if you have a database, if you have a data lake. Uh, you, so if you have rows and columns, you just say, okay, this column is what I, I want to predict. And here are all my example rows, and then it will uh, build the best model it can. So I have a couple more minutes. So under the hood, how does it work? Um, experts know, um, but so first, it's, so this is unique to, to Google. Uh, we call that meta learning. Um, so before launching the actual training, it's actu actually launching many different uh, trainings to decide on the best uh, neural network architecture. So it's a research paper if you'd like to, to know more. At the, the heart of the, the automail techniques, um, it's called transfer learning. So here it's like the vision model that we saw before. When you provide additional examples and you launch a training on top of that, you are building additional layers in your neural network. And that's how the model gets customized to your own needs. Okay. And also something that is now automated, we are able to find automatically the best um, optimize. So, uh, so it's really optimized. Uh, before that, experts had to do it by hand. Uh, it's also an API. If you are an expert, it's called a VZ API. Okay. So let me show you um, some uh, more examples. So here, I did an object detection um, model. Um, working on electronic boards. So I just needed here 100 pictures where I said, this is what I'd like to detect. I made a TensorFlow.js export, and the video you see here is actually a recording of my web page. And it works in real time. So I have a, this was uh, during uh, the lockdown. So this is my working from home desk. I have a nice webcam here uh, with a nice autofocus. And here, in real time, I, I can detect the, the chips on the board, um, and of course I didn't use, so this is a, an electronic board of an e-book uh, device uh, that was sold in Germany. And I can do, with the recording and so on, so with a lot of bandwidth taken, I can do between four and five predictions per second. So it's pretty nice and it works in, offline in the web page, I was amazed. Uh, by it, okay. Um, so you can do more machine learning, of course. Um, there are platforms, AI platforms. So at Google, it's called Vertex AI. 
you can be an expert, but you can also use the auto email uh, um, features that you've seen. Um, there are vertical platforms for documents, so document AI building on top of the OCR. It's able to detect tables, and, uh, <coughs> sorry, forms, uh, analyze uh, receipts, uh, invoices, um, bank statements, and more. Uh, with Dialogflow, you can build chatbots, okay? Uh, so here are examples. So I'm going to show you this example. So I tried, I've been working on, on docu Document AI lately. And so I asked my wife and kids to write uh, a sentence with their own uh, handwriting. And um, Document AI is able to detect everything correctly in this example. My son has a handwriting so-so. And more than that, it's able to tell me that it's a form. And here that I have a key and here a value. So I can automatically process handwritten forms. It's pretty nice. Uh, in this other example, uh, we are able to, so it's a demo that's online that I, I published and an, an article also. We are able to automatically uh, detect identity cards. Uh, I've te tested it with German uh, ID cards and German passports. It works greatly. And you can do that with a webcam and it, it does work. Yeah. And so my demo is an autofiller demo. It's, uh, you don't have to type your ID data all the time. You can uh, automatically uh, get it from a, a picture. Okay. If you'd like to invest time in machine learning, you can become an expert. And there are two main frameworks to, as of today, TensorFlow and PyTorch. That was not the case uh, a few years back. Uh, and they provide the same level of features. So it's time to wrap up. What have we seen? Um, there are three ways you can benefit from machine learning. How much time do you need to uh, invest with machine uh, learning APIs, so existing models? You need hours. The, the first demo with the mustache, I did it in one afternoon. I got a prototype, and I know that it would work, and then I made the final demo. Uh, with a toy mail, you need days. and. Roughly, on average, every model that I did uh, before it started to work well, I worked two days uh, on them, okay? Uh, it's not much to be able to, only two days to be able to, to, to solve a problem, and then you can use the model uh, everywhere you'd like. Uh, the difficulty, there's absolutely no difficulty with the machine learning APIs, but with AutoML, the difficulty is the data set is, itself. You need to work and, and build and provide good examples uh, actual examples of what you will be dealing with. And, and, and if you provide a bad data set, then you will have a bad model. Yeah, so there's no magic, right? The, the quality of your model will come from your data set. Here are pointers to uh, everything I've shown. Here are articles, uh, tutorials, uh, and demos. Uh, they are on my GitHub. You can also follow me uh, on Twitter. Here it's um, a comic book um, where you can refresh your memories or learn more. Um, it's been done by Google AI. And thank you, Shun. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, so I hope you all learned something uh, today. And my grail is I hope I gave ideas to some of you. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, thank you. And I'm staying around to answer your questions. I'm out of time, so I stay here or uh, upstairs. Okay, so if you have questions, if I can help, uh, feel free to come to me. Thank you. <laughs>